Hello everyone, this is Chris Fregley, and today we're going to talk about the highlights from today's Data and AI Summit by Databricks. The CEO of Databricks, Ali Godsey, starts off with some impressive numbers for the event hosted this week in San Francisco. With 60,000 total attendees, 600 session, and 140 countries represented, this is quite the event. In addition, Ali boasts some astonishing open source metrics, including 1 billion downloads per year for both the Delta Lake and Apache Spark project and 200 million downloads per year for Unallflow. Across all of these open source projects, Databricks has contributed over 12 million lines of code. Today's launches include everything from Databricks' recent acquisition of the creators of Apache Iceberg to performance improvements to usability improvements to a demo of their new AI features. Let's start with what Databricks is calling their uniform file format support for both Apache Iceberg and Databricks Delta Lake. After a conveniently timed one-week-old acquisition of Tabular, Databricks now employs the original creators of Apache Iceberg. As the CEO points out, Databricks can now better influence the Iceberg roadmap and further unify the two formats to the benefit of the Databricks customers. Reminder that Databricks is not a publicly traded company and therefore does not fall under the same FTC scrutiny as other recent acquisitions. At last, Databricks is not 100% serverless. The CEO, Ali, emphasized that this was a multi-year project that involved 100s of engineers and product managers. It is well known that Databricks migrated to Kubernetes for various parts of their stack of a few years ago, so it would not be a surprise if this serverless platform is fully Kubernetes native. With all of their recent acquisitions, Kubernetes would definitely simplify the technology integrations. As a highlight, Ali reiterated that the A Databricks cluster is now legacy and that customers should move exclusively to the serverless option to inherit future advancements and innovations. No tech conference is complete without a few celebrities. NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang arrived with his signature leather jacket and black shirt. The reason he wears that black shirt, by the way, is because other shirts make him itchy. True story. Next up is Fei Fei Lai, who talks about her novel work with robotics and 3D slash 4D world models. Let's move right into the new Databricks AI features powered by their recent acquisition of Mosaic ML, now seemingly renamed to Mosaic AI. Patrick Wendell, one of Databricks' original co-founders, explains the typical life cycle of an AI model as it flows through the system. Note the term compound AI, which we will get back to in a bit, starting with model training and tuning. Patrick's boasts that Databricks customers have trained over 200,000 AI models in the last year. While we don't know the number of customers he is referring to, this is an impressive number nonetheless. One of those customers is Shutterstock, who have trained their own image generation model using Databricks. Pretty cool. Here is a screenshot of Databricks' new no-code fine-tuning capability. Simply select the foundation model that you want to start with, point to your dataset stored in Databricks, wait a few minutes or hours, and you have your fine-tuned model. This model can be served with one click to the Databricks serving infrastructure. Reminder that you will pay only for the serverless compute that you use. Super cool. Let's shift focus to calling AI functions and tools from SQL. Patrick highlights Databricks' new tool catalog denoted by the little FX icon next to the function name. These functions are fully integrated with the Databricks Unity catalog and can be shared with anyone in your organization that has access. Here is an example of a freeform AI query function that allows you to specify which LLM you want to invoke as well as the specific prompt. Note the variable product underscore name used in the prompt string. No AI conference is complete without agents. Agents are part of a larger concept called Compound AI named by the folks at Berkeley Artificial Intelligence Research, including the most well-known and techie co-founder of Databricks, Mate Zaharia. Patrick Wendell introduces the Databricks slash Mosaic AI agent framework, including an SDK and set of libraries for serving agents and RAG applications as real-time endpoints. Additionally, Patrick announces a new agent evaluation framework to gather feedback, debug, and improve your agent-based workflows. To complement the agent and RAG workflows, Databricks has officially released their embedding and vector search functionality. In addition, they release support for the GTE family of embedding models in both large and small. Here is an example using vector search directly from SQL within the Databricks environment. The last announcement from Patrick is around governance, permissions, guardrails, and runtime tracking. These features all fall under the Mosaic AI gateway product name as shown here. Next up is a super cool demo from Casey, a product manager at Databricks. This demo will demonstrate how to invoke and debug a foundation model using the Databricks model playground. First, Casey selects which model she wants to invoke. Next, she specifies a custom prompt in this case. She wants the model to generate an image and tagline to use as an Instagram post based on specific customer feedback from a data store of customer product reviews. Here we see that the model has been invoked as function with a specified prompt for a highly rated product from the reviews dataset. The image and tagline have been automatically sent to Slack for review by the marketing team who can then push the post to Instagram. Super duper cool. Great work, Casey. Oh, one more thing. 
Databricks also announced new support in MLflow to debug and trace the inputs and outputs for each model invocation. Here we see the complete call stack, including calls to the LLM. Upon inspecting the output, it seems that the model hallucinates if the product Liberty Chip Cookie, in this case, is not found in the dataset. After Casey adjusts some confidence thresholds, the system now recognizes that it doesn't have enough information about the product to generate a useful image and tagline. Instead, it correctly returns a response without a hallucination. On to our favorite topic, performance. For this part, we are joined by Reynolds Zinn, a co-founder of Databricks. Reynolds takes us through a series of AI-powered performance enhancements to the Databricks product, which he calls Prediction EO 2.0. These performance improvements lead to much faster query performance compared to their competitor, likely Snowflake. Here we see that their competitor's query performance decreases as the number of concurrent queries increase above 32. Given that Databricks has moved to a serverless infrastructure, this is extremely important and likely a requirement that unblocked their 100% shift to serverless. Great work. Arnold. Now let's cover some of the usability improvements, some of which are powered by generative AI. Here we see an error in a Databricks notebook that used to show an ugly and unreadable stack trace. You can see the AI assistant on the right that not only explains the error in human language, but also suggests a fix. Love it. Next we see one of my favorite features, data provenance. Note that while not shown here, data provenance also extends to AI models, which makes it straightforward to track which data was used to train a specific model. Fantastic. Next up is dashboards and a new feature called Genie, which allows you to chat with your data. Databricks has officially released their dashboard feature, which has been in development for a while. Dashboards are relatively boring in this world of generative AI, so we won't spend much more time on that topic. Let's move on to Genie and chat with our data. Here we see a simple Google-like search widget to query our data. This search widget uses a compound AI agent query. There's that phrase again, compound AI, to search across many sources, including the Unity catalog, metadata, query history, notebooks, and dashboards. Here are the results of the query. Note that, while not shown here, the compound AI agent will even ask for clarity from the user if it needs more information to complete the query. Thanks for joining me today. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel for more Augie insights. See you next time.